Good morning, good evening, no matter, wait, 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 I messed that up. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are around the world. Welcome to my classroom. We're going to talk about capacitance today. I see everyone out there, actually, I see everyone over there. Feel free, guys, to ask questions. Um, I will hear it on the bot up there, so uh, de definitely, uh, definitely ask any questions you might have. We're going to cover capacitance, like I said. Before I do, though, I'm going to go ahead and call roll, and I'm sitting here Ruben at, at the one says, test. you sound you far, far away and quiet. quiet. Okay, hold on. I can fix that. I can fix that. Is that any better, Ruben? Or is that still a little low? Because I can, I can make it louder. I can gain it, man. I can just uh, hold on. Let me, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and go. Let me, go, let, let, me let me add, let me add a uh, a filter, and it'll be some gain. And I'll add gain. How's that? That'll probably blow your eardrums off now. Let's let's do this. Let's go right to there. Ruben Rikine says, "Still a bit low for me, but if the others are good, then I am." Well, it it should be it should be high. Um, I noticed that I did you know peg it out a little bit. Um, let's see. Rolando says, "Hello, hello, Rolando." And I'm thinking, can you guys hear the bot? Is the bot echoing or anything? Am I echoing? Um, do I sound too low? See, it just it just hit red right there. So let's uh, let let's go ahead and and take some roll here. Let's see. I see Noah. What does yes says, mean? The bot, the bot echoes and is loud. The bot echoes. So let me Rolando just. L. I'm going to turn off says, the desktop display. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now the echo should be gone since it's not monitoring the desktop. But I should be able to hear the bot still on this end. Um, so somebody else say something, and I should hear the bot, but it won't be echoey. Yeah. See? Christian Alienator says, I'm here as well. Rolando L. says, Echo. Now, the bot is turned off. Let me see if by chance the desktop. Mm. When a girl has no name says, Hello, when a girl has no name. Um, let's see, let's get rid of that. Let's go to SpeechBot. You can close that out. Pedro Lopez says, hello, sir. Hello, Pedro. All right, let me go back to this. Let me go back to this. Um, and I also see him and I garage out there. Howdy. I, I, I saw that you were there. Okay. So I got Noah Gomez present. I got Ruben present. I've got, hey, Caleb's out there. Hello, Caleb. Caleb Muhan is out there. Brian Ibada. Brian, Brian, Brian. That, that'd be under the eyes, wouldn't it? Brian's here. Him and I garage, sorry, him and I, but but you're welcome here anyway. Bonibara, him and I, Hervé Nieto. Hervé Nieto is here. Um, Daniel Sotelo. Daniel Sotelo is here. Edgar M. Edgar, Edgar M. Says M. Here. Edgar M. is here.
Rolando, I got you too, buddy. Let's see. Uh, Ray Nieto, Daniel Sotelo, Edgar M. I saw Christian Hillemeyer out there too, right? I'm pretty certain I've seen that out there. Um, I said, let's see. Ruben Rolando. I could have sworn. Oh, I see what happened. Yeah, there's Christian Hillemeyer. Got you down. Um, Christian Hillemeyer says. Yep, I see you. I hear LOL. Uh, I, I, see, I see Grant Bell out there too. Um, yeah, there's Pedro Lopez. Okay, the only ones I don't see are the other Christian. Okay, I'm just going to say the first name, guys. Uh, I don't see Felix. I don't see Kevin. But that's it. Everybody else, I got you guys down. Um, if I missed you, holler, and, I, and I'll make sure I put you down. Um, anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about capacity. Yes. Oh, wait. Yes. There you are. Here. Okay, good deal. Gotcha. Gotcha, Kristen. Gotcha. Um, so then the other two that I don't see are Felix and Kevin. And hopefully they'll be they'll be coming in here in a little while. Okay. So I've got right here the, the PowerPoint. Okay, and these are the topics we're going to be covering. How the charge is stored, charging and discharging, the farad unit, um, the typical capacitance, electrolyte com uh, capacitors, capacitor coating, uh, parallel capacitance, serial capacitance. Oh, says, around how long do you think it will take? I'm on a horse on top of a hill, lol, trying to get internet in Mexico. <laughs> well, good. Hey, send pictures, okay? <laughs> It'll take probably about the same time as a regular class does, but uh, but noted, okay? But noted. Oh, oh my goodness. Sounds like fun, though. Uh, parallel capacitance, series capacitance, and I'll talk about this as we go in. The energy that's stored in the electromagnetic field of capacitance, and then measuring and testing capacitors. That's something we really haven't done. I don't think we actually have that I know of. I, could, I, I can't put my hands on a, on a, a capacitor tester. I have one at home that I actually built, kind of like those little kits you guys built. You can make a little capacitor tester. And then some troubles with capacitors. And there's a lot of troubles with capacitors, especially as they age. So a capacitor consists of two separate conductors that are separated by something in the middle. Okay, and that insulator is called a dielectric. Guys, I will put up a test or a fill-in-the-blank form um, uh, that will eventually be a test, you know, once, once we go to the final. But, but uh, for right now, it's not up. But I will send an email out when, when I get it set up. Um, and it, it'll probably be in the next few days. And, of course, you guys will have time to you know, go back and, and reference the material and stuff. The uh, PowerPoint is in, in the lecture also like normal. And, of course, there'll be a link to the, to the, to the video to the, to the lecture. So, so the capacitors actually store energy in, in an electric field, basically in between the, 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 the plates. The storage means the charge remains after the voltage is, is pretty much disconnected. So you can actually charge a capacitor by putting a, a, a charge on it. says, is it going to echo the whole time? Oh, it's actually echoing, huh? Hold on a second. Maybe I've got something else wrong. No, it, sh it shouldn't be. Maybe it's picking up two microphones. Hold, hold, hold tight, guys. Yeah, I definitely don't want you guys to have an echo. Let me, let me, let me, let me see if, if I can fix this. Hold on. Uh, let's go. Let's go back up here. There. Let's see if I've got any other microphone inputs. I don't have any other microphone inputs though. I don't know why it's echoing. Um, I don't think I have YouTube open either. Interesting. 
Nope, that's not there. Interesting. Um, let me look at something else. Let me go ahead and just, just mute everything out that I possibly can. Is the echo still there? Because there's actually only one active uh, microphone input right now. Even even this one is off, but I but I can change it to this one. Are we still echoing? Any echoes? Let me look at something else. Noise suppression is on. Gain. I want to go a little bit down on the gain. So, do we have an echo still? That is better. Huh? Pedro Lopez okay. says, still echoing. What is echoing, guys? Is it the bot that's echoing? Because I'm going to try something else. Let me, let me try something else. Hold on. Is it the bot that's echoing, or is it me? Ruben Rikine says, the bot. The bot is echoing. Okay. All right. Um, let me do this. Let me do this. Roland Noel says, the bot is. Okay. Huh. Let me look at something. Uh, trying to figure out where my speakers are. Hold on a second, guys. All right, I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch from the overhead and I'm going to move it over to the speakers. Let's see there. So now I should be able to hear should be able to hear the bot through the speakers. Maybe. I should have heard that actually. It might be a little delayed. Um, okay. In any case, I don't. I don't need the bot. Let me. I can just kill the bot also. Um, let's go back to the to, to this here. I'll just. I'll just look over here. You guys don't hear the bot, do you? If somebody will type something in there, they'll. Uh, you'll be able to hear whether the bot is echoing anymore or not. Okay, I'm going to continue forward. So, so a capacitor consists of two conductors separated by dielectric or an insulation of some kind. And, and that insulation could be various different things. We'll, we'll talk about those. Hello, everybody. So I didn't hear you, but I saw it. Okay, well, it's, it's off, and I'm not getting it through my speakers either. It doesn't matter. I can, I can look over there, just kind of, what I'll do is I'll lecture a little bit and look over there, okay? So um, since there's a little bit of a delay, we'll just work it that way. Um, it's different than when I'm at home, because at home I've got the setup a little more refined and stuff, and, and I actually hear myself at home which I didn't set this up that way. I guess I probably could, but I don't even see any earbuds. Anyway, let, let's just continue. So, capacitor, like I said, is two conductors for the third time with a dielectric in the middle or some type of insulator. It stores a charge between the plates, and that charge stays there after the power is removed. Okay? The measure of how much charge is stored is called capacitance, or the capital letter C. Um, so, if, if you need something to provide a specific capacitance, it's called a capacitor. Or the old name 
was a condenser. In, in cars, they used to be called condensers. In, in old radio equipment, they were also called condensers. Um, but I specifically remember them being called condensers in the point systems that, that cars used uh, way back in the day, probably before any of you were born, is my guess. So, we basically apply a voltage to a discharge capacitor and it causes uh, the current to charge the capacitor. So, between the two plates, then there'll be a potential difference and thus, thus an electrical voltage or a charge, actually. Uh, connecting a path across the terminal, so, you know, whatever the two little legs that are sticking out, if you, if you, if you touch them together, it'll discharge the capacitor because it'll basically be a... a, a you know, a full, a full uh, a circuit at that point. A capacitor concentrates the electric field in the dielectric between the plates, and that's that's what I'm saying. That there's there's a a, a field of electricity in between the two plates, uh, and the concentration corresponds to a magnetic field concentrated in the terms of a coil, kind of like a kind of like the the, the field that that uh, a transformer had, you know, in the coils kind of the same thing, but the charge is, is, is actually held in place. Instead of it, you know, expanding and contracting and, and changing and moving. And so that's kind of a picture of the dielectric or whatever the, whatever the insulating material is. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Uh, you put a voltage on both sides. And you guys remember seeing the capacitors, the little, the little orange disc ones, or, or maybe the the electrolytic ones that look like little cylinders. But the point is, is there's two, there's two connections on there. This one happens to have no polarity because it doesn't show a little plus or a minus on them. But it's a, it's, it's a plate A and plate B. And, and those two plates, the, the charge is stored in the center. So the electrons that accumulate on the negative plate, or the negative side of the capacitor, provide electric lines of force that repel the electrons from the opposite side. The same the same, you know, uh, likes uh, repel, you know, opposites attract, okay? Um, two main effects of capacitor are charging and discharging. I mean, it's either charged or it's discharged. Um, the accumulation of charge res results in a buildup of the potential difference across the capacitor. So whatever the charge is in here, guess what? That right there applies to it. Um, in other words, if I put 10 volts on here, and not with the switch open, right? Because at this point, we're going to have 10 volts. Well, normally we'd have 10 volts across the switch when it's open, right? Well, we're not going to have 10 volts for sure across, across the capacitor. But when we close the, the switch, then, then there's a current flow, like, like so, that actually charges the plates. And guess what? You have 10 volts of charge in here, like, like that shows right there. So, and the charging continues until the capacitor voltage equals the source voltage or the applied voltage. So, the effect of the electric lines of force throughout the dielectric that result in the storage are called, uh, wait, wait a second, the effect of the electric lines of force through the dielectric, and that's through the dielectric, results in storage of the charge. So it's that effect of, of, of the, uh, the, the force through the dielectric that stores the charge. The, uh, the electric field distorts the molecular structure so the dielectric is no longer neutral. So at that point, it's not neutral. It's got to be positive or negative, but it's not neutral. Um, the dielectric can be, can be ruptured by a very intense field with high voltage across the capacitor. That means it can break it, okay? Ruptured, right? Uh, capacitor discharges when the conducting path is provided across the plates without any type of voltage. So if we take and we take um, a wire or a jumper and we jumper across the, the, the in this case, we'll, we'll call this positive and negative, even though this probably isn't a, a, a capacitor with, with polarity. But if we go on each side of the capacitor, we basically discharge it. Because what we're doing is we're completing the circuit between one plate and the other. So here the wire between the A and B provides a low resistance path for discharge of current. So yeah, wires are low resistance, right? 
So therefore, there's, there's a, a circuit, and poof, it discharges. The storage charge in the dielectric provides that potential difference. So whatever that storage charge in here was, then it, it discharges in a sense by having that, that circuit, okay? Um, when the positive and negative charges are neutralized, the capacitor is discharged, and the voltage across it is zero. Um, if you touch a charged capacitor on both leads, guess what you're going to happen? Oh, well, guess what's going to happen? That capacitor is going to discharge because you're touching both leads, right? And guess what? Zap! Also, um, in, in the olden days, there were high charges uh, in capacitors in the back of, of, of uh, CRT monitors or, or, or well, I was going to say or LCDs, but not LCDs, uh, monitors that actually held a charge. And it was very dangerous. And you had to go in there and discharge it before you actually did any work in there or any troubleshooting or anything like that. Um, so, so basically, if you take a clip and you put it on one side, and of course you got to make sure that you're not grounded, so properly insulated, you know, clip a, uh, an alligator clip on one side, for instance, with a probe on the other side, of course the alligator clips may be on, on ground, you can poke around in there and discharge them. Well, do you think you guys will see some type of, of sparks? You bet. It, it'll arc just the same as if it were a charge, because it is a charge. It is an electrical field. So, so it's real important that if you ever handle a capacitor, that you make sure that it's discharged. Now, if it's been, if it's been sitting upstairs for two days, it's not going to be charged. Chances are. But you always want to be safe and discharge it before you, before you touch it. So a capacitor, can, a capacitor can store an amount of charge necessary to provide a potential difference equally the charging voltage. Sounds like we're saying the same thing over and over again. Well, we are, okay? Any charge or discharge current flows through the conducting wires, through the circuit on the outside, uh, to the plates, but not through the dielectric. So basically, you know, goes goes out of it. Um, charge and discharge currents must be opposite directions. So if it charges this way, then it's going to have to discharge the other way. So just just a thought. Uh, more charge and discharge currents uh, result in a higher value of C for a current amount of voltage. So a current of C does not does not change with the voltage. It depends on the physical construction of the capacitor. So if the capacitor has more plate area, for instance, or it's closer together, or it has multiple plates, it'll be able to store more charge depending on, on the plate area itself. Um, so it depends on the, on the actual physical construction of the capacitor. So the farad is the basic unit of capacitance, just like the R or resistance, right? Or ohm was, was the basic unit. Um, the farad or, or F is the basic unit of capacitance. One third of capacitance equals one coulomb of charge stored in dielectric with one volt applied. And it's a lot of charge. It's a lot of charge. Uh, most capacitors have values less than one farad. That's what I'm saying. A farad is a, is a lot. Uh, a microfarad, okay, one times 10 to the negative six farad. Uh, a nanofarad, a picofarad. So one times 10 to the negative nine, one times 10 to the negative 12. I mean, guys, we've been working with milliamps, right? Where, where it has three decimal places. This has six decimal places, nine decimal places, 12 decimal places. Tiny, tiny, tiny farads or, or, or fractions of a farad. But that's a lot of charge. Well, not so much that those are a lot of charge, but a farad is a lot of charge. The amount of charge stored, hey, there's Max Entertainment. Yeah, school is in session. Um, I'm talking about uh, capacitance and about uh, um, the stored charge is where we're at right now. But, but, uh, but anyway, guys, Max World Entertainment, if you guys like Star Trek, play some awesome videos. 
Um, I watch all the time. It's, it's, it's really a treat. It's really a treat if you're a Star Trek fan. Go, go over to Max World Entertainment. In fact, I think he's got, I think he's got a stream tonight uh, in a couple of hours, maybe. I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, but, uh, but go, go follow him. You can copy and paste that into YouTube, and, and you can, you can find him for sure. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. I, I wanted to say I was going to stream tonight, but I, but I didn't. I just went ahead and just said hello and realized what time it was, and I just booked. But um, I stopped by earlier, guys. Uh, so, so anyway, the amount of charge or Q that's stored in the capacitance is basically proportional to the voltage that you put on the capacitor, and then the relationship below summarizes that formula. Um, the, the charge in a capacitor in coulombs is equal to charge, or C times D, okay? And then the energy stored in the capacitor is stored in, in, a, in a unit called a joule. And that little backwards E is, is a joule, and that's one half the charge voltage squared. So, so Q is the electrical charge in coulombs, C is the capacitance in farads, V is the uh, voltage in volts, and E is the energy in joules. See if there's any other any other questions out there. Um, so so that's that's kind of a calculation that you might want to jot down. Um, who knows? You might see it. You might see it. it you know, in a fill in the blank maybe uh, 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 study guide. Maybe even in a in a test. You never know. Um, so characteristics of capacitors. There's there's basically three ways to increase. Uh, capacitance. A larger capacitor basically stores more charge by just applying the same voltage onto it. So a larger plate area, like I mentioned before, also increases the capacitance. More of the dielectric surface can contact each plate that way. So if you have bigger plates, you know, and I can't make my hands any bigger, but if you have bigger area or more area, uh, then more of that dielectric can, can touch those plates. And that, and that process can take place. Um, more dielectric surface can contact each plate, allowing more lines of force between the plates and uh, uh, less flux leakage. You know, flux leakage, leakage is, is uh, basically uh, not being as efficient, basically. Um, so a thinner dielectric increases capacitance also. So when a plate distance is reduced, in other words, the plates come together closer, the electric field has greater flux density, so the capacitance stores, uh, the capacitor or capacitance stores more charge. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. There's some there's some pretty high powered uh, capacitors out there too uh, that I've seen I've seen units like this that have supercapacitors in them that can actually start a car or jump start a car um, some of the newer some of the newer ones are actually coming that way basically to reduce size and stuff but but uh, uh, if, if you're interested in capacitors go google them on, on youtube or go go search for them on youtube you'll see some of what i'm talking about they're actually starting cars with 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 a device as big as as big as a phone So a thinner dielectric increases capacitance. When the plate distance is reduced, the electric field has greater flux density, so the capacitance stores more charge. And of course, the combination of the two, uh, thinner dielectric distance, in other words, closer and larger plates, and uh, uh, those two factors affect the, the capacitance uh, capacity. Characteristics of capacitors, the dielectric constant, K, indicates an insulator's relative permi permi permittivity uh, or the ability of an insulator to concentrate electrical flux. Um, so, so dielectric constant, K, indicates that, that uh, ability to uh, concentrate the electrical flux. Uh, its, its value is the ratio of the flux in the insulator compared with the flux in air or a volume or a vacuum, so so it's it's got to reference something, right? The the way they they rate it. 
Uh, the dielectric strength is the ability of a dielectric to withstand a potential difference without arcing across the insulator. Just think of it this way. When you put two, you know, two electrodes together and they're, one has a positive charge and one has a negative charge, what the, uh, um, what the electricity wants to do, what the electrons want to do, they want to jump. Remember, they want, they want to jump from the negative side to the positive side, right? They want to jump across because of, you know, the, the uh, opposites attract theory or whatever you want to call it. Um, but with that dielectric in between, it gets stored. It doesn't jump across the other side and, you know, go off the, 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 the circuit. It actually, it actually jumps and, and gets stored. Or, or it doesn't ever get to the other side to get discharged. The volt, this voltage rating is important because of the, the, uh, the insulator ruptures. It provides a conducting path through the, the, the uh, dielectric. And you'll see capacitors that are rated not only in, in, in farads or, or millifarads or microfarads or picofarads or whatever the, whatever the, the, uh, the farad is, but also in, in rated voltage also. Any questions so far? Questions? You, you must ask questions. And by the way, Mac, if you're still out there, I had some trouble moments there in the beginning. In fact, my bot's not working because we had an, we had an echo. And you, you probably aren't out there, but... Um, uh, I, I wish I had some form of, you know, um, so, so, some form of little video that, that shows, you know, like like your triple moment. Because it never fails. It, it never fails, man. It never fails. If anybody's ever done any streaming, stuff always messes up. All right. So I'm going to assume no questions. So the dielectric constant... Is, is C, which is equal to K, A divided by D times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 farads. And uh, where the value of the capacitor is proportional to the plate area, that's, that's the A, and it's inversely proportional to the spacing D, or little d, or distance, right, uh, between the plates in, 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 the, in meters. Um, the, the proportional... And it's proportional, excuse me, to the dielectric constant, K, of the material between the plates. So that's, that's a big mouthful. That's, that's, a, that's a big formula right there, or a bigger formula, right? It, it's certainly not, not uh, you know, voltage divided by resistance equals current, that's for sure. But uh, you guys can handle it. It's, it. it's a formula that can be written down, right? Ah. Check this out. Now, um, the, uh, the dielectric constant K of air is 1. So remember, we were talking about the comparison between air. Uh, aluminum oxide is 7. Ceramic, 8 to 1,200. Glass is 8. Mica is 3 to 8. Oil is 2 to 8, paper is 2 to 6, plastic is 2 to 3, and, and tantalum oxide is 25. So look at this one right here, ceramic. That seems to have, at the very minimum, more than all these others, right? So the ceramic capacitors actually store, are very much more efficient at storing uh, electrical charge. Um, this is plastic. These are ceramic. These are paper. These little little disc capacitors are able to store a lot more, a lot more. And look at this right here. 500 volts. How's that for, for, for voltage rating? This one's only 100. Uh, this is 0.05. This is 0.001. This number encodes, and, and I think I think we get into the actual number. Um, the same thing with this one: 0 0.1 plus or minus 10 percent. So they even have rating. Doesn't that look like a uh, uh, 
a resistor, right? So you got to make sure sometimes that you're not dealing with a resistor or, or a capacitor in this case. Now, these are used in older, uh, probably point-to-point -point, uh, circuits. And and in the old radios, for instance, these things would go bad all the time. And you'd have to, you'd have to replace them. Um, because of them being wound like this, they just... Uh, they, they would mess up after a while, but but the point is is um, I, I don't think that's relative size uh, This might be uh, But but that might not sometimes they're like that big Because um, you can kind of see papers two to six, right? Well, wouldn't wouldn't this be smaller than that considering the, the K value of it? Anyway, uh, capacitors are, are classified by dielectric. They're either air, mica, paper, plastic film, ceramic, or electrolytic. Um, they can be connected to a circuit without regard to polarity, except the electrolytic capacitors. Remember when we were building that little robot? I was showing you where, where the negative had the, the, the stripe on it and sometimes even the, the negative symbol. So... Capacitors don't have polarity except the electrolytic. Um, the polarity of the charging source determines the polarity of the capacitor voltage. Um, capacitors block DC, and this is something they do really well. They block DC voltages and pass AC signal voltages. So, And they're used all the time for, for filters and, and, and to basically manipulate the, 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 the signals that, that, uh, that, are, that, are, that are in a circuit. So types of capacitors, we've got mica, which is typically used for small capacitance values of, of, 10, of 10 to 5,000 picofarad. The P means pico. Paper is typically used for medium capacitance, which are values of about 0 0.001 to 1 microfarad. Um, and then film, very temperature stable. It's frequently used in circuits where the characteristics are, are you know, necessitated or, or where this characteristic is a necessity. In other words, it has to be temperature stable, such as radio frequency oscillators and timer circuits, for instance. Now, there's all sorts of newfangled capacitors, too. Um, I don't remember if, if, if actually in the lecture it, it uh, had them, but, um, but capacitors are everywhere. Uh, I had uh, I had at one point in time a whole bunch of motherboards that had capacitors that were actually leaking and they were electrolytic. They were they were uh, uh, inexpensive capacitors that, that the vendor purchased, you know, in mass. Well, you get what you pay for. You know, five years down the road, all those capacitors were, were bulging. You can actually see the top bulging. Some of them were actually the uh, dielectric was actually oozing out of it. Um, and the 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 strange thing is is some of them didn't have any problems. Others would give all sorts of weird issues like computers restarting, not coming up, locking up, uh, all, totally different things. And you know, the power supplies also have capacitors in them. Guess what? If they use some of those, those inexpensive capacitors in the power supplies, those were also susceptible to that. And they were. We would have bad, bad power supplies. Now, you couldn't see inside the power supply as well to see it as you could on the motherboard if, if it was bulging. But what you do is you just pull the power supply out and put another one in. And guess what? All of a sudden it works. Or it stops having the intermittent problem, which sometimes are really, uh, uh, you know, problematic. So types of capacitors. There's also what's called variable capacitors, which have fixed plates that form a stator. And, and moving the plates on the shaft as you rotate it, changes changes the distances between and, and and I can't put my fingers flat but if you look at the at the uh, uh, the picture there on D you can actually see like flat plates right and what they're doing is the distance between the plates well if the plates move and you can't see the bottom part but the bottom part looks somewhat like that and then it's kind of going in here like this so the distance between the plates is changing thus the the capacitance is changing and hey, what's the uh, dielectric in those? Why, why, it's air. Air is the dielectric in those. Um, those are used 
for a lot of things, uh, radio, radio tuners. At least radio tuners used to have them. Um, if, if it's got a knob and it's not some other fancy, you know, newfangled, you know, processor that, that's actually changing the frequencies, uh, it ha probably has one of those inside. And uh, uh, capacitance is varied by rotating that shaft, which rotates those plates, and they mesh with the stator plates and, and, and change capacitance. Uh, so tuning capacitors and radio receivers are, uh, are, are a common application. Voltage rating of capacitors. We saw some with, with voltages a second ago. The voltage rating capacitor specifies the maximum potential that you should put uh, in, in, in DC voltage that can be applied without puncturing the, the capacitor or without blowing it up, actually. Um, but uh, the potential difference across the capacitor depends upon the applied voltage. Uh, it's not necessary to equal the voltage rating. You don't have to have, you know, 500 volts rating. As long as the, as long as the rating of the capacitor is greater than the circuit value, you're good to go. Um, Breakdown rating is actually lower for AC voltage because of the internal heat that's produced by the continuous charge and discharge that's taking place because it's going negative positive. So, so the breakdown rating is lower for AC voltage because of that. Uh, electrolytics provide the most capacitance uh, in the smallest pace with the least cost. So electrolytic capacitors are used a lot. You'll, you'll open up anything, uh, computers, uh, radios, TVs, you know, and you'll see electrolytics. Um, electrolytics may have a very thin dielectric film, which allows it to obtain a very large uh, uh, capacitance value. So remember that, that dielectric being, or the plates being closed and that dielectric being, being really thin. You can kind of see here, uh, the negative electrode of a capacitor, the gauze that's separated and, and saturated with electrolyte, and then an oxide film and a positive electrode or, or a foil maybe. Um, and, and as you guys saw, you know, uh, had a positive and negative. And look, the negative is actually connected to the, to the can or to the, or to the uh, container that the, that the capacitor, the cylinder capacitor has. So polarity, electrolytes, or electrolytics, excuse me, are, are using circuits that have a, a, a combination of basically both DC and AC circuits. The DC voltage maintains the required polarity across the electrolytic capacitor to form uh, the oxide film. Uh, and here's all underlined, right? If the electrolytic is connected in the opposite polarity, the reverse electrolysis forms a gas in the capacitor. It becomes hot, and if you're lucky, it doesn't blow up literally in your face. Um, if, and I was gonna try that. I was gonna bring a capacitor in here and charge it. And I was gonna show you how it discharged and stuff. And then I was gonna do it backwards. Well, guess what would have happened? Pop! It would have blown up. Um, in, in some of, in some of my, my other classes, I've, I've shown videos, and maybe I should have, of electrolytic capacitors blowing up. Who knows? I might even post something uh, to, to, to show you that. Um, because it's really pretty cool, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I just didn't want to catch a fire in here. That, that's all. And that only happens with electrolytic capacitors if you reverse if you reverse the leads and the polarity, or, or the polarity. I was working on a power supply, and, I, and I'm serious, I was 16 years old. I had it open, and I put the, 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 the electrolytic capacitor in, and I put it in there backwards, and I turned on the power supply, and it went, boom! It hit me right here. You know, because, because the, the wrapped part of it basically just, just blew up. Leakage current. So a disadvantage of electrolytics is a relatively high leakage current, which is caused by the fact that the oxide film is not a perfect insulator. Tantalum capacitors uh, are a type of electrolytic capacitor that features a larger 
charge in a smaller size. They have a longer shelf life. Um, they have less leakage current than, than other electrolytes. And of course they cost more because the aluminum type of, of uh, electrolytics that are in them. Any questions so far? Just, just as a, a, a second thought or an afterthought, I still don't see Felix and I still don't see Kevin. So if you two are out there, please say something. Otherwise, you will be marked absent with, with a red pen. <laughs> so capacitor coating. The value of capacitors is always given in either microfarads or picofarads. And, and it's right on there. You can, you can see it unless it's coated. The coating depends on the type of capacitor and basically who manufactures it. Um, so there's, there's film type capacitors. And if you notice, remember that, that one capacitor that had that number? Let me, let me go back to it. That number right there, which is 24222. Let's see. Let's see if we can make any of that. We'll see. So the coating depends on the type of capacitor and its manufacturer. Well, um, right here, this, this has the first digit of one. Um, this is a film type. I don't remember what that one was. Uh, one five is the second value. Then we get a multiplier. And then we've got a tolerance. So K is the tolerance. K is uh, 0.001, right? Which is plus or minus. Oh, I'm sorry, that's multiplier. Plus or minus uh, 5%, plus or minus 10%. So K is plus or minus 10%. Sound familiar? Like a resistor, maybe? And, and I, I, I see you, uh, Caleb. I, I see the message that uh, you're saying that Hervé called and uh, his phone lost connection uh, to the live. Uh, he can always watch the, the, the video. The recording will be there. Um, and uh, it's what he gets for being in Mexico on a horse on a hill, but, but it sounds like fun. No worries there. Tell him, okay? Um, just tell him to, to keep tabs in the module for any of the assignments that get put in there and stuff. And certainly to watch it when he can once it's once it's finished. Um, so this one is the first digit, which is a one, right? And then a second digit, which is a multiplier. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the one five, and then the second digit, which is a multiplier of two. So two is a multiplier of a hundred. So that's one five times a hundred, right? Um, with a with a tolerance of, of k, which is ten percent. And some examples are down here. 152K is equal to 1.5 times 100, which is equal to 1,500 picofarads, or 0.0015 microfarads, plus or minus 10. If it was a 759J, it would be equal to 75 times 01, because the, the 9, right? The 9 is 0 0.01 for multiplier. You know, center looking. If this one's two four two two two, there was three twos. I'm not. I'm not certain. But anyway, so so the letter R may be used at times to signify a decimal point, as in as in two R two, or or two point two picofarads, or or microfarads for that matter. Also, you can also see it like that. So it'll either have something like this, or something like that, or actually the actual value. So in the ceramic disc capacitors, you've got a similar, similar setup. This is the manufacturer. This is the capacity. 
So in this case, it says 0 0.022. This is the tolerance, which is J in this one and K in this one. This is a temperature rating, NPO, um, uh, Z5F. And notice this one's got a working voltage. It says one kilovolt, 1,000 volts. So this little ceramic capacitor can, can go up to 1,000 a, a, a volts. But anyway, that's basically the same, or, or according to this chart, you know, you can kind of look up and see what the capacitor, uh, ceramic capacitor uh, code are, or code is. Um, did, what did it say? Yep, 1,500 picofarad, exactly. Plus or minus 10%. Good job, Ruben. Good job. Um, so, so that's it. That's it right there. Um, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. That was a plastic. That was a plastic. But see, those those only have that. That's that's uh, 0 0.05 Z. Z51U. No, 51U. Let, let me see if, if we can figure something out. Point zero five Z and it's 500 volts. Let, let's go over to uh, to the ceramic. Oops, I'm going backwards the other way. This is film type. This is ceramic. So there's a Z, so this is Z for the first one, which is a low temp, uh, and it's plus 10 degrees centigrade, right? Then the five is is a um, is 85 centigrade, and then the Victor, which is plus 22 percent. To negative 82 percent, or, or or through 82 percent, and that's uh, and that's the capacitance change over the temperature range. So so these actually fluctuate in capacitance. Hey, Jim Bashirs, how you doing, Jim? Just uh, doing a little a little capacitance talking here. Um, hope you're doing well, Jim. I hope hope uh, hope you're you're your back is, is doing better, man. I, I really do. Um, so some mica capacitors, they use these little these little uh, uh, color dealies right there. So the different coating systems are used for mica mica capacitors, right? Um, I don't remember the last time I actually saw a mica capacitor, unless it was in in point to point wiring of radios. Um, but again, the same thing takes place. Okay, microcapacitors, black AWS paper capacitors, um, black, right? Uh, the first significant figure is here. The second significant figure is here. The characteristics are here. Uh, the tolerance is, is that yellow dot, for instance, and then a decimal mul multiplier. And then AWS and JN fixed capacitors, the first dot, silver or black, um, which is the first significant and then the second significant dot, and then a decimal multiplier. And then down here, the same, the same thing. First significant value, second significant value, third significant, the voltage rating, the tolerance, and the decimal. And I know I could have sworn that there wasn't a color chart somewhere, but I guess not. Um, so chip capacitors. Uh, and, and they're, they're calling these chip capacitors, but they're surface-mounted capacitors, um, uh, you know, for SMD devices. Um, they're, they're, they're tiny, right? They're, they're on all sorts of, all sorts of, uh, uh, of, of circuit boards and stuff. And this one actually is not. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like that right there, okay? There's, there's one, but that's not as small as the one they're going to show us here. Um, as devices have, have gotten better and as, and as manufacturing has, has made this smaller and smaller, I mean, that is a surface-mounted surface um, uh, chip. Uh, 
and they're way smaller than the regular size chips. Um, but as but as SMDs have gotten smaller, uh, you have to. And I don't I don't have any on here uh, because this is actually an old network card. Um, well, I, I guess I do. I guess I do. Yeah, yeah. I take that back. There are some right there. I don't know if you can you can see that. I I certainly can't see. So I hope that's that's uh, focused well. But but right there are capacitors. The only reason I know it's capacitor is because it says C, as opposed as opposed to those on this side. Those are resistors. But you see how tiny those are? I don't I don't know if you guys can can physically see that if that's focused or even are able to see it because I can't really see what I'm looking at. But so so those those are surface mounted capacitors. I'm surprised that this that this BNC, okay, it's probably a, a, a 10 base T network card, has maybe even a token ring card, I don't know. Um, but has SMDs. And this thing Trying to, trying to find a date on this thing. And I don't really see one. But this is an old card. Yeah, I do see one. That's a 1991 card right there. So we're talking, this is a 30-year-old card, and they've got SMDs or surface-mounted devices on this card. Can you imagine 30 years later what type of alien technology <laughs> we've got on our, on our cards and miniaturization and stuff? So... Anyway, my, my guess is all this is, is in a chip probably that size, you know, uh, the way miniaturization has been going. So, so basically what that's saying, for those chip capacitors or SMDs, make sure that it's a capacitor and not a resistor. And capacitors have a, have a solid color body, which, which I guess these do, but the resistor also has one. Um, uh, and electrodes are completely enclosed at the end of the part. In other words, it, it, in other words, you can't really see it. You can't really see the electrodes. Um, there's three popular coding systems for, for for chip capacitors or SMD capacitors. All systems represent values in picofarads, and examples uh, follow in the next slides, which I'll kind of show you. So um, this one right here actually looks like that and to be honest with you guys I can't see the numbers on that thing so we'll probably have to use a microscope to, to see that number right there because um, that is really tiny so the system uses two place coding in which the letter indicates the first and the second digit of the capacitance value and the number indicates the multiplier so depending on what letter you've got there, and I can't even begin, I can't even begin to to uh, to see that, but I'm going to try. I think I might have a magnifier here. I don't remember if I uninstalled it or not. Let's see if I can do this. Nope, nope. Magic Johnson comes up. There we go. Yeah. Magnifying glass flashlight, but the question is, is it installed? No, no pro features for me. Trying to get some resistors and capacitors together so I can show you guys, but I think I'm gonna. Oh, and it took it when I moved it. 
Well, I'm going to give up on this. But anyway, the point is, is and there, and I could see, I could see um, the, the the numbers and the, the letters and the numbers on there. Um, if you guys have any any cards like that, take a look. Take a look at them. Use some type of phone magnifier to actually look at it, and you'll see you'll see the the combination. So, let's see. Let's see. So. Two-place coding each letter indicates the first and second digits of the capacitance value, and the number indicates the multiplier. So that's kind of like that. Then there's um, a 05 is like 5 picofarad. Alternate two-place code values below 100 picofarads. The values are actually directly on there. But notice they don't put the PF. They just put the, the actual amounts. So the value of 100 picofarad and above the letters and the code number. Uh, 10 times 10, A times 1, A is 10, 1 is times 10, that's that's uh, 100 uh, picofarad. Um, this one here, N times 3, N, N is 33, uh, and then 3 is is a, is a thousand, so this one is, is 33,000 picofarad or 0 0.033 microfarad. Then there's standard uh, single place codes, uh, like you've got an orange W, and the color is the multiplier in this case, and if that's a W, well, let's see, a W is 4.7, 4.7 times orange is 1, so it's a 4.7 picofarad. Um, just trying to see if I saw some of those. And there's some bigger ones on here. And I'm going to try one more time because I'm just, I'm just hard-headed like that, right? The irony is I'm seeing a bunch of a bunch of resistors and I'm not catching any capacitors. And really what I'm seeing is they don't have any type of of numbers on them. They're just they're just gray. Nope. My phone's not participating in this in this lecture. As soon as I said it, I had I had to say it. Um, there's ah, there's a couple of them. Hold on, let me see if I can. Yeah, I can I can do it this way. It got so sluggish. Okay, so let me go over here. Hopefully it saved it. And my phone's like even not wanting to cooperate at all. So, but anyway, I tried. I, I think I'll just continue. Because um, it didn't really even save it. So anyway. That's that's a capacitor color coding also, um, if you can see it, right? Then there's tantalum capacitors. They're little bitty, they're little bitty uh, balls like this, and notice they have different colors on them. Okay, and these are these are capacitors that are, that are that are a lot a lot better, I guess. Um, but again, depending on the color code or the first figure, the second figure, and the multiplier, 
There's the chart form and stuff. And the tolerance is up on top on these. And then the voltage and polarity is on the left. So there's actually five, six. One, two, three, four, five, five. Five. Like I said, there's five colors for the different uh, uh, tolerance, first figure, second figure, multiplier, and, and the voltage. So they don't even have to be written on there. Just with color you can tell. Um, so what happens if we take capacitors like we did resistors, right? With resistors, we took a resistor and we put it in parallel with another resistor with another resistor. Well, if you, if you notice, if you notice that if we connect res, uh, capacitors and resistance in parallel, I'm sorry, we connect capacitors in parallel, it's equivalent to increasing the plate area. So if we put capacitors this way, it's going to actually be the addition of the capacitance of one capacitor and the other capacitor and the third capacitor and the fourth capacitor, you know, for, forever and ever. Um, so the total C is the sum of the individual Cs. The total capacitance is equal to capacitor 1 plus capacitor 2, et cetera, et cetera. The voltage is the same across parallel capacitors, just like the voltage is the same across parallel resistors. Um, the only thing is, is the number increases for the capacitance, whereas the resistance in parallel resistors that are, that are in parallel, the, the resistance drops, right? So that's kind of a, a little, little switch. But if you think about it, you've got more plate surface, therefore you've got more capacitance. Now, if you connect capacitance in series, uh, the equivalence uh, is, is an increase in the thickness of the dielectric. So the total C is less than the smallest individual value. Where have you heard that, right? So the capacitance, the, the equivalence capacitance, is a very similar formula to, to, the, uh, to the resistors, right? But instead of it being resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, it's capacitor 1, capacitor 2, capacitor 3. So in this case, uh, when you connect capacitors in, in series, then instead of adding the values, it kind of looks like the, like the uh, parallel um, formula, right? The same as the other one looked like the series formula. So that's, that's how you figure out. Uh, and, then, and then a good point to note is that the total capacitance is less than the smallest individual value, just if it were, uh, you know, uh, resistors in the, in parallel. Even though the capacitors are actually in series, so there's there's a, a little bit of a change. So capacitors are are used in series to provide a higher working voltage. Uh, you know, for, for the combination. So if we have, for instance, three equal capacitors in series and it has one-third of the applied voltage, the voltage across the capacitor is inversely proportional to its, to its charge. So a smaller C has a larger proportion of applied voltage. Um, all have the same charge because they are in, in the same current path. So they all have the same charge uh, with, with, with equal charge, the smaller C has the, the greater uh, potential difference then. Charging current is the same in all parts of the series path too. So, um, Questions? Comments? And I think, I think we're starting to get to the end. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, we are. Kind of, kind of. We still have a few more sections to go. Um, so, the energy stored in, in, the elect, in, in the electrostatic field of the capacitance, the, the field itself of the charge is stored in the dielectric and has electric energy supplied by the voltage source that charges the capacitor, or that charges the C. So, energy is equal to that little e, which is equal to one half charge, voltage, or I'm sorry, capacitance, voltage squared, and that, that is in joules. Um, the capacitance is in farads. The voltage across the capacitor, of course, is voltage. And then the electrical energy is, is, is the joules, which really this formula, that's what it said. Energy is equal to, to, 
to, to electrical energy, which is, which is joules. So stored energy is the reason why a charged capacitor can produce an electric shock even when it's not connected to a circuit. So one thing we used to do, uh, and this was actually in high school, we would charge capacitors on, on, uh, uh, on power supplies. And then we would take and throw the capacitor to somebody. What do they do? Oh, they catch the capacitor. Well, guess what? Those two leads more likely touch their hand. And guess what happens? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was fun, to say the least. Right. It's fun until someone gets hurt, right? Uh, but do not do this at home, kids. So a capacitance meter, a meter that checks capacitance, right, uh, is a piece of test equipment that's specifically designed to measure capacitance uh, its values, uh, basically, of whatever the capacitor is. So for non-electrolytic capacitors, uh, lead polarity doesn't matter. You can just plop it on there, and basically you just touch it on there, and it tells you, oh, that's X, Y, Z. Um, if it's a if it's a electrolytic, well, you have to make sure that you put the right terminals to the right point. Um, and, of course, you have to discharge the capacitor before applying it to the meter, because if you don't, then that voltage, when you put it down in there, will literally complete a circuit within the meter, and you don't want that. Uh, so it's important to know conversions from nanofarads to micro or picofarads because the meters uh, don't measure nanofarads. So you have to make the calculation depending on what the meter is reading out. Um, and I'm sure there's meters that are you know high dollar value that will tell you exactly the but you still need to know the conversions. So there's also something called leakage resistance of capacitor. It's, it's a, is the resistance in parallel that the capacitor represents all leakage paths through the capacitor uh, can discharge. So let, let me reread that again, because I think I just goofed it up. Leakage resistance is a resistance in parallel with a capacitor that represents all leakage paths through which a capacitor can discharge. So that means that whatever the series circuit, whatever the circuit around it, whatever that, that resistance that that capacitor is in, that'll be the, uh, uh, the leakage resistance. So eventually it'll discharge, just as if you totally grounded out the leads, whatever that, that rate is, that's the leakage resistance. And eventually when you turn the power off, there's a circuit on that capacitor, right? With resistors and with circuitry and stuff, that's what they're saying. That's, it's going to take it that long or, or that resistance you know, to discharge the capacitor. So there's three leakage paths uh, possible. Leakage through the dielectric, across the insulated body between the capacitor leads, and through the air surrounding the capacitor. So, so there are various different ways for that leakage to occur. Um, we normally don't have to worry about it, but just be aware of it, that, that those are the, the, uh, uh, the ways that a capacitor can discharge. So as a general rule, the larger the capacity, the lower is leakage resistance. So, you know, uh, I've seen capacitors that, that are huge, you know, and, and probably as huge as, as this right here. Well, they take a long time to discharge, right? Um, and that's why it's so important if you ever get in the back of, of electronic equipment that has large capacitors, keep that in mind. Those capacitors, I would say, think that they're always charged until you make sure that you discharge them by taking, you know, and, and, and connecting across the positive and negative leads. Because even though it's got a circuit attached to it, it may not have the resistance, or it ha might maybe the time has it has it gone forward to discharge that capacitor. So as, as a general rule, the bigger capacitors hold actually hold more charge and are potentially more dangerous than the smaller ones because they'll hold a more you know a larger charge for a longer period of time. Uh, and then leakage current is ten temperature sensitive. The higher the temperature the greater the leakage because of the lower leakage resistance. 
So when we measure and test capacitors, the dielectric, dielectric absor absorption is the ability of a capacitor to completely discharge to zero. It's sometimes referred to as battery action or capacitor memory. Um, and I'm sure you've, you've, you've seen this happen and just not, not even realized it. But, um, dielectric absorption is due to the dielectric of the capacitor remaining a charge, remaining, retaining a charge, excuse me, after it's supposedly discharged. Um, and usually what will happen is you'll zap yourself on it. The effect of dielectric absorption is that it reduces the capacitance value of the capacitor. Uh, that's, that's one effect. All capacitors have at least some dielectric absorption. And dielectric absor absorption can be checked using capacitor inductor analyzer. Uh, do we have one upstairs? Maybe. Uh, I probably doubt it. I, I don't think I've ever seen one upstairs. So equivalent series resistance, or ESR, Dielectrics cannot simultaneous or instantaneously follow the cycle of continuous charge, discharge, and reverse charging uh, that an applied AC voltage causes. If the AC voltage is of a high frequency, there may be a difference in the applied voltage and the actual voltage in the dielectric. Uh, loss in the result of hysteresis, hysteresis in the dielectric also, and losses increase with frequency. So the, the, the higher the frequency, the more losses you'll have. All right, so basically there's leakage resistance as, as it's simulated. We have plate resistance. We have dielectric hysteresis loss. And, and that's what it kind of looks like figuratively, if nothing else, because the capacitor is just that. So the resistance represents losses in the capacitor. Series and parallel resistances represents capacitor losses, and the equivalent resistance, or this one here, represents the total loss in the capacitor. So it's basically all, all three of those resistances that it's that it's saying in the equivalent uh, series uh, loss or resistance. Troubles in capacitors: open or short circuit capacitors are useless because they can't store charge. So if it's open or shorted, you know, open is like it's not even there. Shorted is like a piece of wire, so it, it can't, can't charge. Uh, leaky capacitors um, is, is equivalent to a partial short circuit. Uh, it has a, a greater loss, and it's insu insulating properties, gradually lowering its resistance. So, so after a while, it doesn't work like it's supposed to. It might not have the right values, um, you know, not to mention the mess that they sometimes make. Um, except for electrolytics, capacitors do not deteriorate with age while stored since there's no applied voltage. All capacitors can charge or, or can change value over time, uh, but some are more prone to change than others. Ceramic capacitors uh, often change value by 10 or 15% during the first year. So, so they, they change. And I think the capacitors in the old radios did, did change a lot because that was one of the things that when you go restore an old radio, you change capacitors first. Checking capacitors with an ohmmeter. You can use an ohmmeter. You set the ohmmeter to the highest range, say a range of, of one meg. Uh, you disconnect one side of the capacitor from the circuit. You've got to take it out of the circuit, basically. So you can just clip or, or remove one leg out. Um, and you disconnect that, right? And then you basically don't have any parallel resistance anymore or a path that can lower the resistance. You keep your fingers off the connection since your body has resistance and lowers the reading. And then you basically check it with, with an ohmmeter. Checking capacitors with an ohmmeter um, continues. Uh, for a good capacitor, the meter pointer moves quickly towards the, the low resistance side of the scale and then slowly recedes down. You know what that is? It's actually the charge and voltage that you're seeing, and then it goes down. Um, when the pointer stops moving, the reading is the dielectric resistance of the capacitor, which is normally very high. So, so it'll go, you know, like that, basically. Um, electrolytic capacitors are usually measured in as much, uh, in, in measured a much lower resistance of about 500 kilo ohms to 10 mega ohms. In any case, 
In all cases, discharge the capacitor before checking the ohmmeter. Because what, what happens when you check ohms when you have voltage and you're on the ohm scale, right? Uh, do we blow fuses, maybe? Not like that's ever happened, right? So when an ohmmeter is initially connected, uh, its battery charges the capacitor. So that's what's happening. You're putting, you're putting the, the ohmmeter on there. In turn, the ohmmeter is applying a voltage to the capacitor. And that's what you're seeing. The charging current is a reason the meter point moves away from infinity. Okay? And then the maximum current flow at the first instance of charge, then the charging current decreases as the capacitor voltage increases towards that applied voltage. So therefore, the needle slowly moves back towards the infinite uh, resistance. And guys, that's it. Um, I really, uh, I really appreciate everyone's here. Um, even, even the, the non-students. Um, I know Jim is a, is a tech, and uh, and and does a bunch of this stuff. So anyway, uh, with that being said, I'm just gonna. Touch base real quick, and I'm going to let you guys go. I didn't see Felix, and I didn't see Kevin. Everybody else was present, and I guess I could add Jim and Mac in here, but I won't. But anyway, guys, hey, have a great one. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. We're going to have another lecture next Tuesday, same bat channel, okay? Um, and I'll send out a link to the, well, obviously it'll be on the YouTube uh, page, but I'll send out a link also to remind everyone um, of what, what the topic is going to be. Uh, so uh, I will also send out an email with, with, the, with the, the coursework that needs to be completed. And, uh, and that'll, be, that'll be later on during the week. As long as it gets done, by the time classes are done, you know, we're good to go. If anybody needs to ask me any questions, please ask. Um, if anybody has a question... Uh, during during the Thanksgiving break, of course, email me too. So anyway, no matter what you do, guys, have fun, live long and prosper, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream, and you guys, you guys have a great one. Thank you.